Ever since there's been language, there's been sales. In fact, even in the ruins of Pompeii, there was an advert for a clothing company expressing the quality of their goods. Over the years, groups of people have codified and operationalized these techniques in what are called sales methodologies. In this video, we take a trip through history to explore why these processes were created and the factors that affected their creation. To start with, we're going to talk about the Sandler selling system. In 1966, a gentleman by the name of David Sandler was fed up with getting no's. In fact, he had 87 consecutive no's from 87 different calls. There were three issues that he wanted to tackle. First of all, working on unqualified deals. Second of all, getting used and abused by prospects. And lastly, hearing no's all the time or the dreaded, let me think about it. So he invented something called the Sandler selling system. This was very simple. It was designed to do precisely this. Number one, build and sustain relationships with clients, qualify the opportunity and close the sale. And to visualize the system, he created something called the Sandler submarine. What's unique about Sandler is that it's the first sales methodology that talks about customer pain. What is now considered to be common language and a typical sales process is designed to uncover pain, this was a brand new idea at the time. When the 1970s rolled round, everything was changing. The world saw the birth of modern computing, with fledgling brands like Microsoft and Apple catapulted into the public consciousness. But there was one older, more traditional brand that was making real innovation in the world of sales, and that was Xerox. In the late 70s, Xerox ran a study to understand what set their top performers apart from the rest. And after this research was conducted, a gentleman by the name of Mike Bosworth collated this information and created what is now known as solution selling. Solution selling was considered to be incredibly unique for its time. In fact, it flipped what we knew about sales on its head during the 1970s. Instead of leading with product and hoping the product fit the customer's need, the solution selling system wanted to lead with the customer. So it gave birth to common terms like diagnosing customer needs, establishing value, crafting a potential solution. On top of this, it started to really delve into buying processes. So understanding the buying center in the decision making unit, bargaining to access that decision maker, and as well as terms like proof of ROI and positioning proof, negotiation and a win-win solution. These were brought about by solution selling. This put the customer at the forefront of the conversation as opposed to the product. The 1980s is synonymous with selling and salespeople were held in incredibly high regard. With this newfound fame, behavioral psychologists started to look into the fundamentals of selling, including a man named Neil Rackham. After spending 12 years studying the behavior and systems of salespeople, spin selling was born. 35,000 calls later, his research was considered gold dust by organizations looking to understand his findings. He was hired by the likes of Xerox and Motorola, and his discovery is still used over the world today. Why tell the customer their problems when you can get them to tell themselves? SPIN stands for Situation, Problem, Implication and Need Payoff. A simple questioning framework that guides the customer to externalize their world and imagine either a utopia or dystopia. How can they achieve or avoid it? Well, the answer is simple, your product. Can you explain what internet is? No, she can't say anything in 10 seconds or less. Oh. <laughs> oh, Allison will be in the studio shortly. What, is what does it mean? It's a, it's a giant computer network made up, made up of, uh, started from... Oh, I thought uh, you were going to tell us what this was. It's so like a, look a in computer the dictionary. billboard. It's, it's not in it. It's, it, it's, it's a computer billboard, but it's nationwide. Right. And it's, it's several uh, universities and everything all joined together. And right. And others can access it. And, right. And it's getting bigger and bigger all the time. The 1990s was severely lacking in innovation when it came to the subject of sales methodologies. It was Xerox who again led the light of change. As the market became more competitive and with the birth of the internet, the need to stand out became critical to all sales pitches. The value selling framework is by no means unique. However, it concentrates on differentiators and how your product or service is different to competitors. It seeks to strip away complex sales processes and in a way go back to basics. Part of its charm is its simplicity. Then a book in 2011 changed it all. Matthew Dixon and Brett Adamson published The Challenger Sale. The world had seen a recession, social networks had seen content marketing become the norm, 
and this had disrupted the way decisions were being made. Both Dixon and Adamson claimed that the idea of solution selling was dead and a new way of thinking was needed. This new approach was designed to disrupt the customer's buying process by uncovering an unrecognized pain. This can be summed up in a simple phrase, teach, tailor, take control. Designed to position the salesperson as the expert and educate the customer on a pain they didn't even know they had, the Challenger sale has revolutionized the way that salespeople approach customers. In many ways, the Challenger sale has helped the PR of a sales professional. It's designed to make the salesperson appear knowledgeable and enhance their expertise. And that was a brief history of sales methodologies. It's fair to say with each environment, each decade and each technological advancement, sales processes need to change and evolve. There is no one right answer when it comes to a sales methodology. I'm fascinated to see what that next big innovation and paradigm shift is going to be in the world of sales methodologies. That was a brief history of sales and I hope you enjoyed. Remember to subscribe, remember to like and as always, happy selling.